Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever time zone you guys are in, you guys know where y'all at since y'all clicked onto the Redemption Chapel page. Today we're going to learn about God, the Sabbath school lesson. And if you guys don't know who's talking, you might have forgot about me, don't know who I am. Well, my name is Shane. I'm Shane Padilla Funes, and that's my government name. Haven't seen you guys in what, well, a month? Hope you guys been staying well, sanitized, showering, washing your hands. I mean, that's the thing we should have been doing before this, but still, I hope you guys all been good. And you know, today we're going to learn about God. So before we start, can we actually have a word of prayer, please? So please bow our heads wherever you're at, on your phone, computer, iPad, Android, with respect to the Android users too, even though I don't like Android phones. So can you please bow our heads? Dear Lord God in heaven, God, thank you for this beautiful day you've given us here today, God. God, you know the world is in a mysterious place right now. It's a weird place right now, God, but you control everything. We we pray to you, God, because you're our Savior, Father. You can heal us from anything. You can protect us from anything, God. And we know that today we're going to learn about more about you, Father, because that's what's most important right now. We're in quarantine. About staying together. And not just staying between families, but also staying with you, Father. Because if there's a relationship we need, it's a relationship with you, God, because you're the most amazing person we know, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So before we start, if you guys don't have your weekly lesson, have it right here. Then I'm going to show you guys where else you guys can go to. So the first place is Custero.es, and this is basically where I get all the power, where we always get the PowerPoints at our church. And if you don't feel like listening to the PowerPoint or watching the PowerPoint or looking at pictures and stuff, which for me, it's more easier because I can see the image and stuff, you can also go to this website over here. It's called snet.org. We can put a, we can definitely put a link in the description if you guys want to see that. But today, as it says, is the origin and nature of the Bible. Like, what is the Bible? Why is the Bible? Why is the Bible so important to us, to me, to you, or to anyone else? So they're going to start off with this verse I really like, and it says, I'm actually have my brother Shane over here read the verse. For this reason, we also thank God without season, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in, in you who believe. First Thessalonians 2.13. And it says, the Bible was written by humans. However, we often say it's the word of God. Why? Why does the Bible state about itself? The Bible was written by humans like any, any other book. Let's say Charles Darwin, he wrote about evolution. But he talks about monkeys and stuff. Where did he get that information from? He didn't get it from nowhere else. He got, himself, he got that from his mind. The Bible was written by humans, but where did they get that information from? From God himself. They had a relationship with God, and God talked to them and gave them information. That's why it's the word of God, not the word of man. And when, we, when people come to pray in church, they don't say, thank you, Father, and please help us so we can listen to the word of man. You don't say that. You say the word of God because that's how beautiful God's name is because the stuff he gives us, the information, is stuff that we shouldn't even get to know because he's such a merciful person and such a beautiful person to give us life and everything. How was the Bible? And these are the questions that we're going to find out as we go through the lesson. How was the Bible written? How should we interpret it then? And on the right, we're going to see what we're going to go in depth with, the revelation, the inspiration the writing process, the word, the interpretation. And first up is the revelation. And it says, For prophecies never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And it says, The Bible's, the Bible's writers claim that they wrote what the Spirit says and not their own ideas, Revelation 2.7. So I'll just bring up that real quick so we can see what exactly what it says. And just give me a moment. Oh, he says you guys are watching my screen now. And it's different. It's different, like, Instead of talking to you guys face to face, I'm still talking to you guys, but I'm just in my room by myself. So it's kind of weird, but I'm going to still get to it. And it says, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who's victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Wow, that's, that's, that's powerful. I will, give, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Because we all want to be in that paradise, paradise of God, don't we? Can I get an amen, brothers and sisters? I'll give you guys two seconds to say amen. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> and we're just to continue with this lesson. It said God used them to show us his plans for us. He revealed himself through them. 
while Jesus did come down to show his message for them, it wasn't just Jesus. We have a bunch of prophets, different people like Moses. And Moses, when Moses got the Ten Commandments, Moses didn't get a pen and paper and wrote down, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not worship any other idols. Thou shalt put not put the Lord's name in vain. Moses didn't just write that. Moses didn't carve that into the stone. God wrote that stuff. Because it's God's word. It's God. It's what God wants him to, to show. He wanted Moses to show the people that Moses was the one who wrote that. God was the one who wrote that. And it says the instructions and advice in the Bible were given to God so they're trustworthy and true. And right here is like we have to go in depth like I was saying with other books and stuff. Like you can read a book or you can listen to somebody. But is that really what if the truth is? Are they trying to mix up words? Are they trying to convince us? Trying to tell what's right or wrong? In the Bible, everything is true. Everything is right. We come here when we're sad, when we're mad, we're depressed, when we need someone, when we're lonely. We come to the Bible because we can find something. And I, every day, every day, I can get, my mom will talk to me or someone else, and I'll find a different verse. Like, wow, how come I didn't see this before? How, why am I just understanding this now? There's things that every, each day I understand more in the Bible, too, because it's so much, it's so hard to interpret sometimes. The more you get older, with more knowledge, you start understanding, like, wow. The Bible is actually really powerful. Why did I sleep on it? Because that's the main problem for me and my youth. I'm still in my youth kindly, but like for other people too, we sleep on it. We have the Bible right there. I could have the Bible right next to me. My my study guide right next to me. I'm gonna go to sleep though. I don't I don't want to I don't want to read the Word of God because why? Because I feel like maybe it's time consuming or maybe I can do some other stuff. I'll push God for later. But now as we see like we're in quarantine right now, we can't push God for later. Because if we're inside all day, what else is there to do? Yeah, you can watch TV and do all that stuff. But how many hours in a day can you spend with God? If you're not going to work, you're not going to school no more. That shows more time for God and what's true. Because God is truth, God is power, God is love. The next thing it says is the Bible is popular for profitable. And I really like that what it says right here, profitable in Second Timothy 3.16. Because what do you profit from? Wisdom. Understanding more. Getting to love another person. Stop being, stop being so angry and stuff. Stop being so sad and stuff. You can see the world in a different way. By reading the Bible, we learn how God wants us to live. Exact, that's exactly what I'm trying to get to. We learn how God wants us to live. God wants us to follow his, his path. God doesn't want us to follow the devil. God doesn't want us to go down the wrong path. God doesn't want us to fail. He sets us up for success. He does all things for a reason. If you lost a job, if you failed a test, God did that for a reason. God has a plan for every single one of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Everyone who said amen, thank you. The next one is the inspiration. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. There's a perfect harmony from Genesis to Revelation. This is so only because the Holy Spirit inspired all the Bible authors. That's the common thing. The Holy Spirit answered all these authors. Man didn't answer these authors. The devil didn't answer these authors. One person. God, the Holy Spirit, all the three in one. They all came in these people. However, all the writers were not inspired in the same way. That's that's one thing. Direct inspiration. God speaks and the prophets write down. God directly spoke to them. God directly speaks to us. He tells us that. That's one way. If someone directly tells us to do this, okay, we'll do that. Inspiring. God reveals an idea and the writer uses their own words to explain it. That's like that's like a dream. It's like a dream when Daniel had the dream, Nebuchadnezzar had the dream. God gave him that, but he didn't explain it. Interpret that. It's the same for the Bible too. The Bible can be interpreted. Different 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 quotes and different stuff can be interpreted differently. It's for you to explain it out. And the next thing is selective. The author the author investigates and the spirit leads them to the right sources. Go into depth. Research. As simple as that. Research. It's like schoolwork. You research, you find, and boom, you find success. This is why the Bible is such a very book. Each author explained God's truth in a different way. That's what's beautiful. They're all coming, they're all coming for like a same, the same common theme, but each person is different. And you can see each person's mindset, each thoughts, because we're all humans. We're all the same people. We're all equal. But sometimes our mind just works different. Some person, that's like they say, is the cup half full? Is the cup half empty? And like, and they'll say pessimistic, optimistic, and stuff like that. Different type of stuff, the way you interpret stuff. So in the Bible, different, the different authors who wrote the books, they came, they all came together for a common theme, 
for the at least the common type knowledge of God, but it came to them differently. And that's really cool, in my opinion. And it says the scriptures were given to the men, not in a continuous chain of unbroken universes, but piece by piece through successive generations, as God and his providence saw fitting opportunity to impress men as sundry in diverse places. Men wrote as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. And that's one important thing is they didn't move because they had to, oh, wow, God talked to me. Now I have to do this. My mom told me to do this. I do this. It says men wrote as they were moved upon the spirit. They moved. They felt their body. They felt their mind changed because God spoke to them. They felt like a different, different mindset. They felt powered to do this. The next thing is the writing process. Thus speaks the Lord of Israel, saying, Write in an all in book for yourselves all the words that I have spoken to you. Jeremiah 32. Why did God want to have his words written? Which are the advantages of a written message? And the first thing is, it's hard to forget what you read. And that's true, because if I tell you, like I tell you guys something right now, I'm telling you guys, but you guys can try to get this in a couple of days. But the Bible is going to be written. And you'll be like, oh, I read this. I read this in the Bible in Proverbs. When people remember they read something, oh, I read this in this one book. Oh, yeah, I can't forget that. Word, like word to word comes by and like, oh, I forgot what he said. What is the exact thing he said? But sometimes if you read something, you have the picture in your image. Oh, it was on this page and it said this exact thing and that. And it says you can go over it and memorize it. Uh, and and, and uh, I remember back in the day in uh, Conquistado, we always had to memorize the thing. But it's going to be hard memorizing it if you're just like, oh, yeah, let me keep doing this. Just keep doing this, keep thinking, thinking, all right, this is how it went, this is how it went. No, read it exactly. Read exactly how it goes. You just keep going, reading, reading over. And the more times you read it, after like 50 times reading, I finally memorized the verse. We all memorized the verse. That's way easier to do. It can be preserved. That's one, that's one important thing. If the Bible was written so many years ago, why is it still here? Because it was written. When stuff is written, it stays there. It's history. It's importance. Because if I, if I tell you something and then I die and you die, where did, where, did, where did our thoughts go? Nowhere. They disappeared. We didn't write them down. Then the next person can't read it. That's why when people die, when certain philosophers die, they always have their stuff written down, the history of the life. So the next person can go up. They pass the torch to the next person. But if, they, if the person dies, who are they going to pass the torch to if they left nothing behind? No trace. No message behind. The Bible stayed on forever, though. The Bible will stay on forever. It's not going to go nowhere. You can destroy a Bible, but the word of God will still be there somewhere because it's been written down after generation after generation. And it can be copied many times. It says there, it's copied in English, Spanish, French, copied in all different languages. So the world can understand it. Not just us, not just people in, in America can understand it. All different types of people can understand it. It can be read in distant places, as I was saying. It endures. It can be read by future generations. It stays here. My my mom reads the Bible. My grandma reads the Bible. I read the Bible. My children gonna read the Bible. My children's children gonna read the Bible. My children's 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 children children gonna read the Bible. Cause it's it's how it's crazy how gen, for generations and generations it stays as I was saying. Even those who cannot read may hear the message from others reading it loud. If I'm blind, how am I gonna read? You can still hear though. That's why God gave you ears. And if you can't if you can't hear. You can still see. You can still see and maybe and do <laughs> see like Helen Keller. Helen Keller was blind to death, so she still read the Bible, though. I'm sure of it. But if a person, a person can still read it to you, maybe at nighttime you're scared. God gonna be there for you. You can read a Psalms to them or, or a Proverbs to them. So it's important that even if you can't do one thing, you can still do the other thing. And it says, thanks to God's written message today, we we can know His will and obey it. Because if this was written down, what are we supposed to do? What are, what are we going to worship? And that, the word. We'll go next to the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word, word was with God, and the word was God. John introduced Jesus as the God's word incarnate. That's a parallelism between Christ and the Bible. And it says, both have a supernatural origin. Both combine divinity and humanity. The work of both covers the human the whole humanity, both came in a specific moment in culture, but the work goes beyond time and space. I think to touch in time, I think for the next thing I, is um, we can't just worship the Bible. 
we have to worship Jesus God. Because people, a bunch of people can come by. I can come by and say, I read the Bible. I'll be saved. I don't pray to God. I don't do none of that. I don't have a relationship with God. I just read the Bible. Like, isn't that true? That's true. Because the Bible is God's word. So as long as I'm reading the word of God, I'm still getting close to God. I don't have to pray to him every day. I don't have to do the right thing. I'm going to still do whatever whatever I want. I'm going to still go out there and party. But I read the Bible. I read the Bible every day. I have to be good. And that's one thing where it says right here, there's also differences between them. Like, all the stuff I was explaining over here on the right side is all is all equal with both of them. But you can't just be about the Bible. It says here, the Bible is not God's incarnate. It cannot be worshipped. It just testifies of Jesus. And we'll go here to this verse right here, John. So if you guys have your Bible, or you guys can just wait for me right now as I look it up. And yes, it says here, you study. You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify of me. We're reading this to learn about Jesus, to get the message about Jesus. But it's not all about just reading the Bible and I'm saved. I worship the Bible. I'm good. I don't have to do anything else. I'll be saved. Is Jesus, was the Bible your savior? Did the Bible die for you? No, Jesus Christ died for us, died for you and me. The interpretation, it says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scriptures is of any interpretation. 2 Peter 1.20. The Bible shouldn't be studied or interpreted as any other book. That's very important. You can read any book about economics or money. But it, is money is monetary value the same as the value you're going to get spending time in the kingdom of God? No, it's not. You're never going to find anything that's equal to the kingdom of God except God himself. For example, higher criticism tried to interpret the Bible by using the grammar by using the grammar structure and ignoring any uh, sub, sub, supernatural elements. Sorry. Because a lot of people are going to uh, criticize the Bible. Well, the Bible says this in one time. Why, does the, why is God acting one way in the Old Testament? Why is God different in the New Testament? Why is this written like this? Why is that written like that? And this stuff doesn't sound real. God God healed somebody. What? That doesn't make any sense. That's really supernatural. That's not true. That's the type of criticism you get from people. And, it said, and then it says, how should we interpret the Bible? Above all, we must understand there's the word of God, so faith is necessary. Reading about God, listening about God. We can do all that, but the important is if you really have the faith, you can read the Bible. As I was saying, we can read the Bible, but are we, do we have the faith in God? Do we actually believe in God? Do we actually spend time with God? Do we actually care about God? That's one thing. Do we really care about God? Do we really find time to devote, to devote our time for God? Do we see God as our friend, or do we see God as someone who's bothering our time, someone who should just push this aside? He's not really that important right now. I'll just use him when I need him. Oh, he'll come back. But he hasn't come in like five years. I've been alive for like 50 years. God still hasn't come. I've been alive for 20 years. God still hasn't come. That's why it says right here, faith is necessary. If anything, faith is necessary. That's really important. The Holy Spirit inspired the Bible writers, and we must let him also inspire us as we read it. Moses, Moses had talked to God, had the power of God, but Moses is no different from us. And we can have the same faith as Moses has. We can have the same faith as Joseph has, same faith as anyone in the Bible had, because we all believe in God and understand that God is our Savior. God is, we love God, that we love God. We admire God. We worship God. We obey God, because God is the only one. Therefore, we should pray before reading the Bible, asking for the inspiration so we can correctly understand it. That's really important. Be like before, before someone starts a sermon, before someone starts a Sabbath school lesson, you're going to dive into the Word of God. You don't want to just dive into the Word of God and speak for yourself. Speak what comes in your mind. You want to speak for God. You want to speak the message about God, that God is talking to you. God is giving you the words to say. And then I'll go into here. It seems like the last slide. Fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventists. The Holy Scripture, the Old and New Testaments are the written Word of God given by divine inspiration. The inspired authors spoke and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And this word, God has committed to the humanity the knowledge necessary for salvation. The Holy Spirit is the supreme, authoritative, and the inflation, revelation of his will. They are the standard of character, the test of experience, the definitive of revealer of God, the trustworthy record of God's action and history. That's very powerful because the scriptures are really supreme, authoritative, and they're about God. They're about what happened in history, about 
what Jesus is about, who is Jesus, why is God important, why did God save me, why is God doing this? All those questions like, why did God do this to my loved one? Why did God do this? All those questions can be answered if you read the Bible. You stay close to the Bible. That's the importance of the Bible. And I think that's about it for now. And before we find this, can we have a word of prayer again? And if you guys can just bow your heads again wherever you're at, as I was saying. I'll go back here so y'all can see me. And Jesus, let me pray. We're going to stop today. Dear Lord God and Heavenly Father, God, thank you today. Thank you for bringing me here today to give this lesson, God. You know I'm not face-to-face -face with the people, my people, your people, our people, my brothers, my sisters, God, because we're all family in your name, Father. We all love one another, God, because you gave us life, Father. So we appreciate you, God. And just hopefully you see how the world is happening right now, what's happening in the world, God. But I have faith in you. I have faith for God, Christ. I trust you. I trust you, Father. Hopefully we all can trust you, Father. Because, God, we know you have a plan for us. These trials and tribulations are here for a reason. You didn't just give us these to laugh at us, to make fun of us. You don't do that. You do this because you love us. You're a merciful Father. You're very merciful. And, God, just thank you because you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. But, God, do we deserve that? Do we deserve that the way we're sinning, God? Because I am a sinner, Father. To tell the truth, I am a sinner. We are all sinners, God. But the one thing I want is eternal life with you, God, in the heavens. I don't, just myself, I don't want to be my own, my own, my only one in the heavens, Father. I want everyone from Redemption Chapel, everyone in the world to be up there with you, God. Because the kingdom up there is blissful. It's beautiful up there, God, when we come to see you, Father. I just pray that we can all maintain a beautiful relationship with Father with you in this quarantine time. Because in this time, we can spend a lot of time with you, Father. We can't push you aside. We have to stay close with you, get close to you. Continue this bond, Father. Thank you. Jesus, let me pray. Amen. And if you watched this video, you got this far, I appreciate you guys for listening on. Because I don't know how long this is. Maybe it was 10 minutes. Maybe it was 15. Maybe it was 20. Whatever long, I know my message got across, and I'm just really thankful for that. And if you guys haven't, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe on this video. Make sure you leave a comment if you want. Make sure also share this video if you want. Do all that stuff. Post it on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, we got all that. And like I said, um, if you don't have the lesson, you can go to fustero.es. So, so if you don't have your book right here, it's okay. You can go to fustero.es. They got French, Italian, Portuguese. They got also in Spanish if you're not an English speaker. And also, you can go to, as I said, ssn.net.org. You can also get the lesson there. And then any other questions, just you can leave a comment there. We can get back to you. And hopefully, we'll see you next week, too, for the next video. Thank you, guys. Have a great quarantine time. Even though it's not that great, just know God is always there by your side. Thank you. Do you think pray?